Cool. So we're here with David S. Kidder, author of the Startup Playbook. Thrilled to have you here. Oh, thanks. So tell me a little bit about, for everybody that's watching, the genesis of the Startup Playbook. Yeah. I think that that's really compelling. Yeah, I, I, it was a real necessity for me because I've been doing you know startups for a long time. You know, mm -hmm. this is my third or excuse me, fourth. And it was like, I just was missing, I had a blind spot. And right. you think you know what you're doing until you hit like these different types of crises. And you don't have the answers, and very few people do. So we had to go, I said it just it was a big personal investigation, like what's the difference? And right. through that came these interviews, that resulted in these lenses. And also this, it becomes a toolkit. You know, you can dive into this thing and pull out very specific instances where you're dealing with talent or boards or fundraising sure. or clients or customers that you have this gut feeling but the gut feeling is really an accumulation of all the things you've known and learned that right. instinct right. so what it does is when you go through it you can start reading like okay i'm not crazy they're saying the same thing it's like right. a validation of that right right it's and good. somebody that's been usually successful is following that pathway same so journey should follow yeah same we all you're, you're all faking it until it becomes true some of the people that are in this book these are very powerful people. I'm curious, how do you curate those types of relationships? And, yeah. and maybe for people that are watching, like, oh, easy for David. You know, yeah. he's talking to you know the the the, the PayPal mafia guys. You know, yeah. how, how does that happen? Um, you know, that's uh, that's good fortune and timely luck. But also, like, I don't think they're that. I mean, they're totally brilliant in a lot of cases, and right, it's right. definitely a small circuit of relationships. Sure. Um, you know, I just got very, I was just very fortunate with the right, good idea at the right time that we really grew very quickly and then struggled to kind of get it across the finish line. But, right. you know, having those investors and those relationships in your life, typically there's a value trade, like you either have a network of people and you can help in any instance, sure. or you have just to think about how you can create value in their life so that as you spend time Love with each that. other, there's still a trade involved. I mean, right. I don't sound disingenuous about this because there is still an authentic relationship if you, you really mm -hmm. are spending time with people. But um, they have such a limited time that everything matters and every counts. So if you can create that value in their life, they will exchange it for value in yours. And I think that's something that in any transaction, personal, professional, it's life. Yeah. It's life. So, <laughs> If you if you're coming there just as a taker, what can you do for me? Yeah. It's you're not going to get that relationship. You got to be there with some compounding value you can give to them. If somebody's starting out right now. They're meeting with VCs. They've got a great idea. They want to cultivate relationships. What are some tips maybe for those types of people to add certain value for those busy people? Is, yeah. yeah. So well, I would try to. I mean, this goes back to the things we talked about in the talk today, which is be a painkiller, not a vitamin. Yeah. Um, I think you got to understand what, how they are in pain. Like, sure. is it because they need relationships they don't have? Are you open to part of the world that they don't have access to, which is unlikely? Right. Is it because you understand um, a part of the world that's sort of misunderstood or not understood? Yeah. So the question is, what don't they get? I think you're looking for that proprietary insight that's actually true. Sure. And if it's, if it's not there, then maybe it's in another, the next sort of arc of that conversation, the next arc of where it's going. And you, you pick that arc and you focus your energy and time in creating value right now, which there isn't clarity. And maybe that's a really great segue into what you're doing with Bionic. Yeah. Is that the similar approach? The Paying for these large companies is that they've probably lost the ability to grow, organically at least. These large companies are more profitable mm -hmm. and more efficient than they've ever been in any time sure. ever, which yeah. is why if you're in the executive suite of a large company today, you can make an incredible fortune because there's just a lot of money, yeah. right? And out of that lot of money um, comes at the expense of innovation because innovation by its very nature is expensive and high risk, Fascinating. right? So if you're low risk and efficient, you can't have, a, and you're basically paying the entire company to stop growth, <laughs> right? So that's actually a bad trade because you have to actually, you can counter to it. So it, it, it's also a skill. So if you lost all the capability to grow because you've refined out organization, right. and you're hiring basically an army of administrators yeah. by degree, right? It's the degree, it's an MBA, right? By its very nature, it's, to admit, it's something that exists, we're trying to perfect it, fantastic. But creating is a totally different skill. So what we're doing is we're reconstituting the ability to create that right. capability, and we're creating a, basically what I call a growth stock, a stack, a box to do it off of that's attached right to the CEO of GE, of Boeing, of Cisco, those companies wow. that we're working with to help them get this capability back. And so we call it a growth stack. It's talent, entrepreneurs, not MBAs, entrepreneurs. Sure. No offense to MBAs, I don't have one. I have lots of people in the company do that, they're right. great. Talent, EIR talent, entrepreneurs, executive, act as an executive chairman, bolt themselves onto a team, pull them forward, aggressive, pull the business apart, find the truth, 
validated. It's like lean startup on steroids. The second is just methods. So Eric Reese and I spent the last 18 months doing a global transformation of GE around the lean startup and the startup playbook, getting a new operating system of growth back in place with Beth Comstock, who you know, yeah. Linda was involved, and yeah. others. Um, so methodology, creating growth boards, getting there, getting like VC style funding in place, go off of annual budgets to outcome based. Um, but the third piece is actually a platform. So we actually have technology. We're building technology to create learning velocity. Mm -hmm. I can take a question that you might have, should versus can, should I even build this company, right? Or mm -hmm. build this idea. Mm -hmm. And I can go validate it, but I can use the crowd. I can take a customer interview. I can go to the crowd and validate that both with us, but in a very unique platform with lots of experts and build a whole corpus of knowledge very, very quickly. It would normally take months or years to form. We can do it in weeks. And so I'm building a SaaS-based platform to do this. And the last thing is just experience. So you mentioned John Reed and Arenas. Serendipity yeah, Labs yeah, yeah. is part of Steelcase. Yeah. They're a partner of ours. Yeah. We built a lab in New York City in Fort Columbus Circle, which is built by Steelcase. And we just changed the experience. They come to us to have a different environment, different location, and actually learn through it. So we've had a, we've had a great, great time. So, all right, what is, I can imagine that there's got to be friction between those MBAs that are essentially getting paid to, to yeah. kind of status quo. Administrate. And then you guys are bolted in. That's gotta be one of the most difficult yeah. parts of that process. Is it just because it's getting sold in from the C level? That's a big part saying, of it. Listen, this is happening yeah. whether you like it or not, so you better get on yeah. board with it. Is that um, that's part of it, but I mean, I think we're just, it's just a better way to work. I think in the beginning, yeah. it's more, it, listen, it's intellectually honest. Sure. To sit down with a person who's writing you a check to go build something and say, I don't know the answer. I don't know. We don't know what's going to happen three years. And I think that that is not, you're not allowed to do that in big companies. Right. You have to have a 20 year forecast yeah. to the decimal point of what this is going to be valued. And then we use rack and stack ROI. We just rank all the best ROI. Yeah. But the truth is, it's sort of like, it's like, we like to call it success theater. It's, it's theater. Like, yeah. no one knows. Yeah. And so the problem is when it doesn't work, which it's not going to work in the beginning, yeah. you go back to your, your CEO or your boss and you say, guess what, we were wrong. That's like, it's, that's fatal in your career. Sure. So we sort of get that out of the way in the beginning to say, we're going to spend less money Cradle. faster okay. yeah. to, and test resourcefulness just to validate, should we even do this? Sure. And then if the answer is yes, if it's no, we stop it, we save a bunch of money because I didn't give you 10 million, I give you 1 million. Right. If it's yes, then I, then I go to the how bucket. How do I do this? And again, very inexpensively, how do I get to the answer before I make anything? And you could, if you use tools like what Steve Blank teaches, like what Eric Reese is, and we created our own industrial grade version of this, you can get to the answer. Sure. And that's why it's bionic. They're sort of like better, stronger, faster than they really are. We're like this exoskeleton Absolutely that poke bolts on them and does like a year's worth of work in like weeks or months. It's fun. I could go on for about yeah, five totally hours cool. talking yeah. about that. It's absolutely incredible. My last question yeah. for you is, Bionic is so smart, and the concept We, we of don't know about that. We're trying to validate that. <laughs> how, well, how long? The brand, I love the brand, yeah. What was the genesis of that idea for Bionic? Was this yeah. just born by no. virtue of like? My last company and the company before that, I did some large strategic partnerships. Uh -huh. And what I realized about those companies, I've taken a lot of money, but also a lot of partnership value from them, is that the, those companies are big, uh, they're super smart, they have amazing talent, they're rich, yeah. right? they have lots of money, but that's not enough. Like, it's, it doesn't matter if you're smart, rich, and you have momentum and scale. The ability to launch things is a totally different capability than it is to scale something. Scale and launch are two different expertises. The launching expertise is actually done in, it's, it's in a totally unpredictable hot mess. And sure. so if you can't get comfortable with that as someone who's writing a check, a CEO, president, SVP, whatever it is, to, to launch something, that methodology is not an administration and scale methodology, it's something different. We produce the something that's different. I think Love that it. skill is just, is really, there's a longing for it. So there's, the friction is not, um, is the balance of the organization, the process, there's friction, right. but the, as you described the MBAs, they're eager to go build. This sure. new generation coming through, they want upside. In Fresh fact, they're willing one. to trade yeah. economics Yes. There is some downside risk for the upside to go build something and create something. Sure. So there's a lot of new new psyche going into this because these companies need to grow. They need to grow organically. Sure. They have lots of refinement. We need velocity. We need learning velocity. I'd imagine that it's probably a lot of fun for them too because they've got the security. Uh, it's just a better way to work. And they're just like, let's it's do It's more this. honest. Yeah. Uh, we do more faster. Uh, we're we're not we're not buying perfect answers. Yeah. We're buying good enough answers. It, we'll get to perfection later, but like. Sure. In the, you know, learning to kind of crawl, walk, run, you know, as I described, like zygote to ugly teenager, 
<laughs> we don't know if this is an Olympian yet. Like sure. the probability it's Olympian is very small. Right. But maybe we have a really good, you know, college athlete or yeah. top. You know, who knows? Yeah. Still a great business. Yeah. But that should be those athletes, so to speak, or those business, those athletic businesses, should be launching off the grid of these companies yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah. So if I ask the CEO how many $50 million companies they launched last year, the answer is probably zero. Yeah. <laughs> what it should be is a lot. We do it all the time. And periodically, we get a moonshot. And that's what we're trying to produce. Fun. Wow. Yeah, it's great. A lot of fun. Yeah. It's very imperfect. I mean, we're only four, you know, 15, 16 months old, so we're still young and we're figuring out. We don't know the answers. And we're sort of, I mentioned this in my talk about patience. I'm not even really, I'm not even worried about like how big this could be. That's the wrong question. Mm -hmm. This is something I should have mentioned at the talk, which is it's a mistake to ask the question how big this could be. The question we should be searching for is how big is the problem that we're solving? How that. permanent is the problem? Love that. Like, does that make sense? Because yeah. that, that is a bigger issue. It's a totally, a simple question changes the entire gestalt of the business. Yeah. Are we building a bunch of tools that right. are incrementally better? Are we focused on the right problem? And if that problem is big enough and bad enough and snarly enough, we'll have permanence and we'll, we'll know where the next arc is coming from if we focus on it.